So good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's very hard to do the BBC today. I'm going to try not to cry through it <laughs> because we just had such a full morning um, of the official conclusion of the course. And uh, of course, I prepared something to say, but that's not what's in my heart right now. So I'm just going to tell you what's in my heart. Um, so all morning we heard from Venerable Wuyin and Venerable Children all the, the, the great responsibility we have to continue um, helping the Dharma and the Vinaya to flourish in this world, what we are capable of as women practitioners. And if you belong to the High Achievers Neurotics Association, as I am a proud member of, um, this may sound like real heavy, right? Like, oh man, what next? This big vision, what are we going to do? Um, so what comes to my mind, actually, repeatedly today, is an image of um, something Venerable Children did that inspired me to ordain. So I'm going to just tell you that story. So I was a lay person uh, helping to serve uh, as her assistant on a trip in India. And we were at her teacher's house in South India. And it was late at night and I was working on my computer. And I remember sitting there and I was looking at what Venerable Children was doing. And she was mending her bra. You know, the, <laughs> the strap of it had gotten stretched out. And she was just quietly sitting there mending her bra. <laughs> And that was just really moving for me <laughs> because the way I met Venerable Children in Singapore, she's like has hundreds, thousands of students. Yeah, you know, almost like rock star, right? Here's the tiny little teacher with thousands of us around. And that's how I perceived it anyway as a lay person. You know, like she could open her mouth and ask for anything she needed. But there she was sitting there <laughs> mending her bra. <laughs> And it just made me feel like, wow, this person is really walking the talk. And th that's how I felt then anyway. Like, you know, she's so frugal. <laughs> she's really practicing so sincerely. She'll use the lay people's offering to, down to its last dime before she even asks for anything else. And I just watching that made me think, I can trust this person with my life. So what I want to say is that you don't have to go out and do anything very big or profound. <laughs> you just have to live an honest life as a monastic. You just have to mend your bra, maybe. <laughs> and then if the conditions are right, someone is going to see that that's how... I mean, you know, we don't have to do any some great grand gesture. Just live our lives as monastics. We're just doing our very best. We keep our precepts. We use whatever is offered to us as best as we can in a way that's uh, respectful and helps the Dharma and the Vinaya to flourish. So I think that's the next step <laughs> for all of us. And I'm just, uh, and the other piece that I've been telling our seniors in this community too, what I found so um, moving for me personally is to see the. Um, rec uh, kinship and the recognition from the Taiwanese bhikshunis. Like, um, the moment they, I, I brought Venerable Tarpa into the faculty wing to do something very mundane, like, you know, figure out the height of a cushion. And when they heard she was the chief disciple, they all broke out clapping, like, yay! And Venerable Tarpa looked at me like, will you stop it? Like, <laughs> stop getting me in trouble. But, you know, just the framework, they know, once you say this is the chief disciple, they know what she has been through. They know she has been on her hands and knees fixing things or the teacher was away, the place was falling apart and she was the chief disciple, she had to hold it together. It was like I didn't have to say more, you know, and to see their appreciation for all the seniors in our community like that. They're like, oh, that's number two, that's number three. Just hearing the number, they knew what they have been through and it means a lot to me um, to see that. You know, it's you did, none of you did it for applause, that's clear. But it, I don't know why, that night I went to bed like so happy. I was like, wow, I've never been so happy in meditation. I'm not sure what kind of mental state this is, but I'm out of my mind happy to rejoice in all the efforts of all the people who came before me. Um, without which, I, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have a monastery to live in and to practice in. So, yeah, I think we can all rejoice. All of us have teachers who have dedicated their lives to the Dharma, whose examples we're trying to live out every day, and we can do it. We are good nuns <laughs> and monk, monks. <laughs>